Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Startup Istanbul 2015. This is our third conference in the series so far. For those of you who don't know, Startup Istanbul is the leading startup event in the region, which brings together founders, investors, and other members of the regional entrepreneurship ecosystem. Before we begin today, we would like to extend a thank you to our sponsors, TEB, IBM, Microsoft, E2 Technokent, SAP, Intel, and PayPal, to name a few. An event of this magnitude would have been impossible without the generous contributions of our sponsors and partners, especially during these difficult economic times. The attendance this year exceeds 1,500, and almost half of you have joined us from abroad, with 59 countries represented in our ranks today. In addition, we are live streaming this event currently online. So I've got a list of our top 10 countries in attendance today. When you hear the name of your country, please clap and cheer and let us know that you're here. So coming in at number 10, we have Morocco. Number nine, England. Eight, Lebanon. Seven, Azerbaijan. Six, Jordan. Five, United Arab Emirates. Number four, the USA. Three, Iran. Two, Pakistan. And number one, of course, our host country, Turkey. 1,500 startups applied to present at this event, and 100 were selected, some from nearby countries such as Iran and Greece, and others from much further away, like Brazil and Indonesia. This year, we had a large number of applicants from Africa, which is a most, most welcome sign of entrepreneurship blossoming across the vast continent. From October 1st to 2nd, a total of 25 mentors met with 100 chosen startups to advise them on their pitches. You'll be hearing the top 15 today. This five-day event features a total of 55 speakers, with around half presenting today on this stage and in our B Hall. It's fair to say that this is one of the most international startup events in the world, and this could be thanks to Turkey's prime position between Europe and the MENA region. Our first speaker today is Professor Erhan Erkut from MEF University. Dr. Erkut describes himself as a social entrepreneur. He builds universities. He was the founding rector of Özeyn University and is currently the vice founding rector of MEF University. Both institutions were modeled after the third generation university, which aims to graduate entrepreneurs in addition to professionals and researchers. He teaches, writes, and speaks about entrepreneurship at every chance he gets. And trust me, I would know, he is my dad. I present to you Professor Erhan Erkut. One more item checked off my bucket list, be on the same stage with my daughter before a possible wedding, hopefully in 20 years. Start the timer so I know what I'm doing. Hello, start the timer, please. All right, I, I, have, I have a few announcements, actually, not quite a speech. I only gave myself 10 minutes as the program director because I wanted our speakers to have an opportunity to share with you what what they are inspired about, what they know about entrepreneurship. But before I say anything, lest I forget the most important thing, I would like to invite the man who is responsible for all of this. The number one entrepreneurship ecosystem builder in Turkey, Burak Büyükdemir. <laughs> so, photo up. <laughs> And those of you who belong to Etohum, please jump, 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 jump. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brack. Wonderful. Two predictions, a judgment, a suggestion, and two announcements. For all these reasons, ladies and gentlemen, we've spent a billion dollars on healthcare finance uh, research, and we continue spending more. China is coming in with 300 billions. Propagation of discoveries into clinical practice slowly coming off the pipeline. Uh, better health consciousness, no more smoking, no more obesity, artificial organs, 3D organ printing, telemedicine, crowd medicine. For all these reasons, ladies and gentlemen, I'm speaking to the young amongst you. You will be living to the ripe age of 100. Most of you will see 90. Now. That might be fine. And you might think you'll have a wonderful retirement of 30 or 40 years. Unfortunately, that is not going to happen. 
as our aging is increasing, as we age as a population, our birth rate is also declining, and our population pyramids are turning from a pyramid to a kite. You see the example of Japan, every industrialized nation, every developing nation is following the same pattern as we have fewer and fewer young people, more and more old people. Now what does that mean for you? It means the retirement plans, which are essentially a pyramid scheme, cannot work on a kite. So the retirement schemes will become unsustainable and retirement age will become a moving target. So you should expect, you should not expect to retire at the age of 60 or 65 or 68 or 70. I'm predicting a much older retirement age. So what have I said so far? Ere dümdük. That part was Turkish, by the way. You will live to the ripe age of 90 and you will work for at least 50 years. The question is where? I know there are several hundred entrepreneurs amongst you, but there are also many more who are contemplating an entrepreneurial career, so I'm speaking to those. Where will you work? Will you really work for a professional company for 50 years? How long can you possibly work in an environment like that? Nine to five, five days a week, 20 days of vacation, measly pay, small raises, almost no vacation, more importantly, no autonomy. You don't decide what you do, where you'll do it, with whom you'll do it, and how you'll do it. And maybe most importantly, you're working on somebody else's dream. How long can you do that? I think this is a great career path for avatars and robots, and I don't think it's meant for human beings. It's about time we recapture what rightfully belongs to us. So I suggest you consider entrepreneurship as a career. Now, those of you who are about to take this advice, scam alert, 40, 40, 40, 40 hours a week for 40 years to get 40% of what you're making now. The scam is called a job, okay? Don't fall for this. Now, if you're willing to take, by the way, this was just sent to me this morning at 6 a.m. by a former student who still works for a consulting company. Isn't that funny? He has bought into the scam. He's just happy because he's making a lot of money for now, but eventually he will get bored. Suggestions for entrepreneurs. Last year I had 10 suggestions. This year I cut it down to five. The first one is read entrepreneurship books. I'll give you a few suggestions. Last year I gave this advice and then people started asking me which books. Number two, follow several startups closely. Pick five, pick 10. There'll be some good choices today. Then offer free help to a startup. This is good news for startups, free labor. It's good news for you. You get to learn by doing. Number four, go ahead and work for a company for five years. It's okay to work for a company for five years before you start up your own company. Which books, you might wonder? Uh, my first suggestion to you is Delivering Happiness by Tony, uh, Tony C. Uh, he's the founder of Zappos. Wonderful autobiographical story about uh, the life of an entrepreneur. Then, of course, The Startup of You by Reid Hoffman and Ben Kasnocha. It's actually a career planning book that comes in quite handy for entrepreneurs, or future entrepreneurs. Then, the, start, the Art of the Start by Guy Kawasaki. And the more textbooky one, Disciplined Entrepreneurship by Bill Olet. I just found out that's about to be translated into Turkish. One that has been translated into Turkish by Özgen University, Lean Startups by Eric Ries. And, of course, the, owners, the Startup Owner's Manual by uh, Bob Dorf and Steve Blank, Steve Blank and Bob Dorf. This has already been translated into Turkish. Now, one thing I noticed was a dearth of entrepreneurship books in Turkish. And unfortunately, uh, English is not as, as widely spoken in Turkey as we would like it to be. So, and I also noticed that there wasn't enough success stories, role models for Turkish youth who's considering to be an entrepreneur. So I thought maybe Instead of complaining, I should do something about it. And um, I'm planning to write a book about the Turkish gazelles, Türk Ceylanları. These are companies that are possibly valued between five and $10 million now, and that have a shot at making it to 100 million over the next three years. I have started with 15, and I'm up to about 40 now. And I would like to publish this dynamic book and update it every six months or something so you can actually follow these gazelles and you can figure out what it takes to be a successful Turkish entrepreneur. I'll give you a few teasers from this book. 
you may wonder which degrees lead to entrepreneurs. See, this is, the, this is based on the first 20, okay? You may wonder which degrees lead to entrepreneurs. Um, the answer is yes. They all do, okay? You may see a, a few more engineers than others, but you also people, see people with uh, backgrounds in physics, international relations, media and visual arts, urban planning. I remember that guy said he became an entrepreneur because of his degree, because there was no jobs in his field. And of course, two people without university degrees, okay? You may also wonder, so it doesn't matter what you study, you can be an entrepreneur regardless. Does it matter where you study? Well, there seems to be a slight bias in favor of the Istanbul universities, but you also see the span is quite large. You could be basically from any university, Marmara, Yildiz Teknik, Istanbul, and you could become an entrepreneur. Then I asked this question, how did you get there? Were you incubated and accelerated? Only four of the 20 were incubated or accelerated. Part of the reason is, of course, these incubators and accelerators are pretty new in Turkey, but this dispels the myth that you need to be incubated or accelerated. You don't. There is another myth that you need to get government financing. Only four of the 20 received government financing. I also asked, did you work professionally before starting up? 14 of the 20 said, yes, we did. And I do remember one of them that said, well, I started my company immediately after graduation and I went bankrupt. Then he went back to a professional life, worked for three and a half years, started up again, went bankrupt again, and his third startup is doing well. So I think there needs to be some learning and that learning can happen in the professional domain. I also asked this question, did your university support you or in what way? Uh, most of these entrepreneurs were kind people. They said, well, you know, university gave me a broad-based education, widened my horizons, uh, taught me scientific thinking, analytical thinking. And one of them said, well, I liked some of the courses. Okay, great. So some of the courses we teach are actually useful. Uh, one of them said, I had one entrepreneurship seminar in my four years at university. There was only one that said I was in the incubator of my university, and only one that said I'm in the techno park of my university. Many of them were more blunt. Ten of them said no support at all. University did nothing for me. Okay, again, instead of complaining about this and just ranting and raving, as an academic, I need to do what I can. So this triggered a thought. Keep an eye out for a disruptive master's program in entrepreneurship, which will be based on lean startup principles. I gotta do my pitch too, you know. Blended learning, online and offline, online coming from a US supplier, offline locally, active mentoring, not taught by academics, but taught by entrepreneurs and investors, internships, required internship in a startup, and you do a startup instead of a thesis. I mean, we call this a master's program, but it really is an extended boot camp. Take Startup Istanbul, stretch, stretch it over the entire year, you got this new master's program. So this will come out of MEF University come next September. Keep an eye out for this. We're also doing something on data analytics for those of you who are interested in uh, big data. So that's my contact information. And Burak, didn't I tell you I would finish on time? I'm way out of time. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.